Map 1 was a big testing ground. Once the map was out and people played it, we learned so much. We, we were able to kind of understand how the game actually is being played by many, many people and what compounds work really well and what compounds did not work so well. Uh, until you put several thousand players all running around, all expressing their own play styles. Um, you know, you never really quite know how that's going to work out. The big fishing village, for instance, was something that people didn't like so much. It was, you never felt really comfortable. You got shot from all different directions. And the sawmill was perceived really well and was fun to play and was, the level of frustration in there was really low. There is room for actually looking at things and taking a step back and see, okay, what works, what didn't work. The data that we get from players has been invaluable, not only from server data and statistics based on how players play, we also get verbal feedback from them, we get forum feedback from them, and we gather all that stuff up and go through it, and then we see how we can apply that to the new level. The first things that we tried to nail down was what kind of main natural features we wanted to have in the map. It is always good to have like an axis from going from east to west and from north to south. It really helps the players to kind of know where they are on the map and they know, okay, if I follow this river, if I follow this road, I will always end up in that and that location. We said we want to be closer to the ocean, so we do have a delta, a river delta on one side of the map and train tracks, a main line of train tracks that goes through the entire map as well. We did a lot of design until we felt like there's enough diversity in the map, there's enough water versus forest versus open fields. We built them in the engine with really simple geometry so we can get a feeling from a player's perspective as well and see if it feels good or not and started to put the compounds in. We wanted to make sure that the compound locations and the positions of them um, made sense in the world. They didn't just exist in places because we needed them to be there. We wanted them to exist in places because that's where they would naturally have been built. We knew that we had spaces reserved for these compounds and POIs, and then we could kind of retrofit into this more natural layout and get a much more realistic feeling out of it. Since the second map is post-Civil War, we have a fortress, like an old Civil War fortress that's been abandoned, an old prison. And then you have like a rail station just for some infrastructure. And from those three points, we kind of build up all the other compounds. In the old map, some of the spaces felt the same, but you couldn't really tell the, the farms apart from each other. And now each farm or each compound does really have a theme that sticks out that you remember. Uh, it's not just farm A, farm B, farm C. It's ironworks, it's brickworks, it's tannery. It helps you to focus on gameplay instead of getting frustrated, instead of getting confused and thinking, is this the same place I've been before? And things like this, especially when you're stressed, you can, you can get confused. The fort and the prison introduced a new type of architecture, a new type of layout to the game that we had no experience with uh, beforehand. They're very inaccessible. I mean, that's their main goal of being inaccessible. You have a fort, you have a prison. Uh, you don't want an accessible prison because that would be a really badly designed prison. So it took us a while to fix that, um, to make it work for Hunt, because players who are defending the, the bounty shouldn't be in an in a extremely powerful position. And when you sit in the middle of a fort, I mean, you're the, the king of the hill you're inside of a fort and it's, it just did not work so well uh, without modifications. We design the fort or the prison in a way that we can cut out areas. It also comes into play with the theme we have. It's, it's post-Civil War. It's an old fort, it's been damaged, it's been shot at. You see like cannonball impacts in the walls. Everything is crumbling down and this provides natural kind of uh, entrances for players to come in. When we establish what each compound does, what role it plays in the map, then we decide within each compound what each room was actually for. Thinking of those people who lived and worked there and how all, all the scenarios, all the um, day of each person, where they wake up in the village, how they travel to the workplace. Pushing 
the atmosphere and the feeling of being in a real place that had a history and that gets you a little bit more tense because uh, everywhere you go, you, uh, you start reading into, into, into what you see uh, and you create your own little story while you're playing. Map 2 is going to be a lot of things that uh, players will feel they're very familiar with, but it's still going to be a totally different experience. Engine.